So, so since he's not talking about it, I'll talk a little bit about what he wants to do. He wants to give a $700,000 tax cut to the average Fortune 500 CEO. That's not change. He wants to give $200 billion to the biggest corporations, $4 billion to the oil companies who made record profits again this past quarter, $300 billion to the same Wall Street banks that got us into this mess. That's not change. He comes up with a tax plan that doesn't give a penny of relief to more than 100 million middle-class Americans. That is not change. Now, George Bush is, seems to be sitting out these last few days before the election. But, but Ohio, yesterday, Dick Cheney came out of his undisclosed location to hit the campaign trail. He said that he is, and I quote here, he is delighted to support John McCain. You don't need to boo. What do you need to do? So I want to publicly congratulate Senator McCain on this endorsement. Because, because he really earned it. That endorsement didn't come easy. He had to vote with George Bush 90% of the time. He had to serve as Washington's biggest cheerleader for the war in Iraq. He had to support the same economic policies that we've had for the last eight years. So Senator McCain worked hard to get Dick Cheney's support. But here's my question for you, Ohio. Do you think Dick Cheney is delighted to support John McCain because he thinks John McCain's going to bring change? You think John McCain and Dick Cheney have been talking about how to shake things up? How to, how to end Halliburton's contracts and get rid of the lobbyists and get rid of the old boys network? Come on. Oh, well, we know better. We're not going to be hoodwinked. It was just a week ago that John McCain said he and President Bush share a, quote, common philosophy. And we know that when it comes to foreign policy, John McCain and Dick Cheney share a common philosophy. A lot of empty talk from Washington, tough talk that doesn't lead anywhere, a war without end in Iraq, the idea that that's somehow the way to defeat Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda, even though everybody knows they're in Afghanistan and Pakistan. So George Bush is in an undisclosed location. Dick Cheney's out there on the campaign trail. He is delighted to pass the baton to John McCain, although it's actually a shovel because they've been digging a hole for us over the last eight years. Dick Cheney knows that with John McCain you get a twofer. George Bush's economic policies and Dick Cheney's foreign policy. And let me tell you, Cincinnati, that is a risk we cannot afford. It is time to change the direction of this country. That's why I'm running for president. We have tried it. John McCain's way. We've tried it George Bush's and Dick Cheney's way. It hasn't worked. Look, we've had a 16-month, 16-year experiment. For eight years, we had Bill Clinton, who and here's what he did. He realized we've got to grow the economy from the bottom up cut the deficit, created 22 million new jobs, made sure that everybody was benefiting from economic growth, from the person at the bottom to the person at the top. Then we had eight years of 
Bush and Cheney. And what, let's see what we've seen. Under Bill Clinton, your average income went up $7,500. Under Bush and Cheney, it went down $2,000. So we can see what's happened. We know what works. And deep down, John McCain knows that, which is why his campaign said that if we keep on talking about the economy, we're going to lose. Which is why I keep on talking about the economy. John McCain, he's spent these last few weeks calling me everything but a child of God. Because that's how you play the game in Washington. When you can't win, you just try to tear the other person down. When you can't win with your ideas, then you try to make a big election about small things. So we may see some of that in the next 48 hours. More of the slash and burn, say anything goes, do anything politics that d divides and distracts us, that tears us apart instead of bringing us together. But you understand that's not the kind of politics America needs right now. At this moment, we have the chance to say no to all that negative campaign. We have the chance to say no to the character attacks. We can recapture, recapture that sense that politics can be something more than just a dirty, nasty game. We can end that kind of politics once and for all. We can prove that the one thing more powerful than that kind of politics is the will and the determination and the decency of the American people. We can change this country. That's what we can do on November 4th, two days from now. Understand this, Ohio. We are not as divided as our politics would suggest. We're not just a collection of states or a collection of individuals. We're the United States. We're a community. We can steer ourselves out of this crisis.